check. Am I on? I'm on. Okay. Okay. Holy Ghost come. Welcome to Arizona Deliverance Center, hosting hardcore Christianity. Before I get, my name's Joe, by the way. Uh, before I get started, please permit me to get through a few announcements. What's up, Joe? Daniela? Daniela? <laughs> um, okay, before I get started, uh, I want to encourage everybody, uh, who in here has gotten every single blessing from God? Every single blessing, every promise. All right, who in here wants more promises? Who in here wants more blessings? You want more from God. Everybody wants more from God. All right, look, the, the blessings of God are already there for us. He has given us every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So what's blocking it? So if you want to weaken what's blocking your blessing, whether it's deliverance, healing, revelation, wisdom, knowledge, prosperity, start working on Brother Mike's miracle list, complete it, and you will weaken it. Weaken what's ever blocking you. And I would say the most important thing that you should work on is Satan's counterattack and the post-deliverance instructions because the enemy will try to steal your blessings. And I would say the most grievous thing that you will ever go through is to receive a blessing from God and lose it. And strive even harder to get it back. So I would encourage you to look at both of those articles, which my Brother Mike prepared. Uh, the miracle list is um, accessible at the top of the website, hardcorechristianity.com. There's a link there for it. And Satan's counterattack is found at the bottom of the teachings page. Now that covers repentance, forgiveness, and the beginning of renewing your mind, but we still have strongholds, all of us, and we spend the rest of our life renewing our minds, but you can get started to tearing down these strongholds by availing yourself to tonight's service, service and take notes if you need to. We also have many services that we offer throughout the week, throughout the month, Check out the calendar page. There's an almost identical list found on the news, event, news and events tab on our Hardcore Christianity smartphone app. So check out that for details. I'm just going to highlight. We've got uh, things throughout the week. Check out the calendar page for details. Um, most of you know what, what we have to offer. Um, just new things that are offered. We have a Cords Lake Community Center meeting that's on Sunday, September 24th at 6 p.m. So meet the hardcore ministry team out there. Support us. Get deliverance and healing yourself. Um, we've got, um, just I'll just go through them really quickly. Sunday we have the deep things of God. Monday and Tuesday we have deliverance. We have um, spiritual recovery with Julie Andrews at 6.30 p.m., Wednesday, we have deliverance, Zoom deliverance for uh, men and women with Rick Cott. Thursday and Friday, we have regular services. 6.45 p.m. before the service every Friday, we invite everybody to bring your anointing, bring your heavenly prayer language to meet us in the corner, the northwest corner of the large sanctuary and usher in the anointing by singing and praying in tongues. 
Um, Saturday, we have many things. Check out the details for that. We have deliverance training the fourth Saturday of the month at noon, and we have uh, children's deliverance coming up. That's usually, that's the first Saturday of every month. I'm, I'm sorry, the first Saturday of the month when it's offered at 10 a.m. for preteens only. We have one-on-one -on -one counseling we offer for free for born-again Christians. Um, we do have expenses. We're all volunteers here, but we have expenses. If you feel led, um, there are offering boxes attached to the doors of the large and small sanctuary. If you want to expand your ministry, we host a bookstore. We maintain a bookstore with well over three dozen resources there. I would encourage everybody to access Plano Spirits, The Root Cause and Cure to Mental Illness, written by Mike W. Smith, and Atonement Healing, which bifurcates healing and deliverance. Okay. Please check out the calendar page for all these details for times for preaching, teaching, healing, deliverance, what platforms, what times, location, all that. I'm going to enter prayer if you care to join me. Heavenly Father, Holy Spirit, God. we come before you in the name of Jesus. We enter your gates with thanksgiving and your courts with praise. We thank you for the broken body and shed blood of Jesus Christ. Father God, we thank you for all the provisions you made for us. Through faith in Jesus Christ. Father God, we ask, though we've received the gift of godly sorrow, we ask for more of it. Godly sorrow, which produces repentance, leading to salvation and deliverance not to be regretted. Father God, you've called us in your word to repent and believe the gospel. We thank you, Father, for the faith you've given us. Not our faith, but the faith that we've received as a free gift from Jesus Christ, the author and finisher of our faith. Father God, we cry out to you. Prepare our hearts, Lord, for your word. Soften them. We want our hearts to be good ground for your word. Fill the valleys of humiliation and bring them hills and mountains of pride low. Make the crooked places of misunderstanding and strongholds. Make, make all these straight for us, Lord. Make the rough places of fear, distrust, suspicion, smooth those out, Lord God. Bring these walls of defensiveness down. It's not good enough for us to have eyes to see and ears to hear if our ground is not prepared. Nevertheless, anoint our eyes. Anoint our ears and the words of our speaker. Let them be seasoned with grace and salt. Father, we come reverent, reverently to you, and yet we rejoice and thank you for the deliverance and healing we're about to receive. We thank you for the broken body and shed blood of Jesus, for it is through the blood of Jesus that are we are redeemed out of the hand of the devil. Through the blood of Jesus, all our sins are forgiven. Through the blood of Jesus, 
The blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, cleanses us continually of all sin. Through the blood of Jesus, we are justified, made righteous, just as if we'd never sinned. Through the blood of Jesus, we are sanctified, made holy, set apart to God. Our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit, redeemed, cleansed, and sanctified by the blood of Jesus. God, we thank you for the precious blood of Jesus. We thank you for the precious blood of Christ. We thank you for the precious blood of the Lamb of God. Thank you, Jesus, for you are the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world that we can call your Father and your God our Father and our God. Lord God, make your move. We are ready to receive a touch from you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord, buddy. Hello. Amen. Thank you for that prayer. How's everybody doing tonight? Amen. It's Friday, right? Amen. It's not a thousand degrees outside. Whew. If we could just hit the pause button. Amen. My name is David Baldwin. Welcome to the Deliverance Center. It's an honor to have you here as our guest. We will show you the ropes. <laughs> Pray with you. Fight with you. Pass your buckets. Wipe your nose. Everything. Hold your hair. Lay hands on you. Amen. We'll throw it right in there. <laughs> uh, it's good to be in God's ER. Amen. It's good to be in God's ER. You know, I've been around the ministry for many years, and Brother Mike, he has a different style. Amen. That's when you can laugh. Amen. He has a different style, unique in and of to himself, amen. And so God definitely broke the mold with that one. And sometimes it rubs people the wrong way. I, I know people, I've brought people over the years, and sometimes it rubs people the wrong way. And if, if that's you, you probably wouldn't be sitting here. Or you're just stubborn for some healing, Amen. Or maybe it's someone that you know, like me, and if that's the case, I do apologize, amen. And I've talked to different people, and the one way I kind of wrap my mind and understanding, and I believe it's an analogy for the Lord, is this is kind of like the emergency room, amen. You know, and people are coming in, and we see everyone, their skin's on, there's no bleeding, they're walking, right? They're upright. They're coherent. It's not like the emergency room at Banner Health, right? Where people are out of it and they're bleeding and this, this you know, we could go on and on. That's the last place I want to be, amen, especially on a Friday night. But this is a spiritual emergency room. And people come here because they've been searching and seeking for freedom and deliverance and breakthrough. And they haven't found it in other places that people get together in the name of Jesus. Amen? So you're coming into a place that is intense. You're coming into a place that people are desperate. They've been looking. I was looking for years. I believed for a decade that I could be set free from mental illness. And, I, and, and this was the first place that said, yeah, let's do this. And so and there is an intensity in here. And there is a rawness. And it is a, it, it is a battle royale. Amen. And what's the prize? Your soul. Your soul. That's what's at stake. That's what this is all about. The battle of good and evil, the kingdom of light and the kingdom of darkness, it's about your soul. And the devil, it is bloodlust. It is hatred and vitriol for anything of God, for humanity. It's just chomping at the bit just to destroy your life from the inside out and drag you down through the gates of hell. That's the reality. He wants your soul. 
and he will stop at no end to get it. And the same thing, Jesus went even further, amen. Laid his life down, dying on a cross, amen. So let's consider that a public service announcement, amen. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you so much for tonight, Lord. It is, we thank you that you made this possible. We thank you for life. We thank you for the, the richness and the complexity. We thank you for the good days and the bad days. We thank you for what you're doing in and through them all. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your glory. We thank you, Lord, that no matter what happens to us, Lord, you are the redeemer and you hold the keys of redemption and you are able to redeem anything and everything that is given unto you. And Lord, we represent, though small in number here tonight, we represent many things that we have done and that have been done to us, God. Mistakes, hurts, pains, lies, disappointments, loss. And Lord, our first step, we step towards you, Lord. And we give these things to you, Lord. Help us to not be ashamed of what we've done, the mistakes that we've made. Help us to not be ashamed of the things that were done to us that we did not ask to be done. Lord, give us a boldness in our humility and a boldness in our cry for you, our need for you, and to share, Lord, what you have, can, and will do in our lives and the lives of those around us, Lord. And I pray tonight for this message, Lord, that I believe, I know, Lord, you placed it right in my heart on Sunday morning in a matter of moments. And I thank you for that, Lord. I'm excited to see what you have in store for my friends here tonight. And I pray, Lord, that you would add to their weaponry, that you would add another arrow so sharp, so powerful, so precise, that just like David, with one stone, slayed the giant Goliath, your enemy, Lord, that my friends here tonight would have that one extra arrow in their quiver to be able to do the same to the giants in and around their lives. Amen. Amen. Shout it out! <laughs> I like being loud, so that's a good title for me. Everybody loose, and we need to stand up. We need to exercise. Do this and shake your leg. Shout it out. This is for the timid. This is for those who are hesitant. This is those who are confused. This is not sure. Mm, this is a message. Shout it out. Brother Joe paid for me to have speech seasoned with Salt and grace. And I said to myself, and hot sauce. Amen. <laughs> Let's get a hot sauce word tonight. Hey, man, I believe the Lord likes hot sauce. Eh? We have habaneros and all those different peppers. Shout it out. This is the key that some of you are missing to your victory. Amen. This is the key right here. These three words. Shout it out. Don't be intimidated. Don't back down. Don't believe the bluffs and the lies and the posturing and the of the devil. Don't do it. No, you're going to stand, you're going to look, and you're going to shout it out in the mighty name of Jesus. Say amen. amen. All right, we'll see you next week. <laughs>
And right off the bat, even though it's spiritual and it's miraculous, it defies human understanding, you could see the seeds of it in the natural. Because he says, see, what I said is going to come to pass. I'm giving it into your hand. And, and don't be discouraged. Don't self-doubt. You see someone who has that testimony that you want. You see someone that has gotten the prayer or the breakthrough. Don't be a hater. Don't wonder why. Say, okay, that is a deposit that God's promise to me is going to come to pass. Amen? See, I've given Jericho into your hand with its king and mighty men of valor. You shall march around the city. Now he's giving some instructions. How many liked homework? <laughs> there, there, there's some instructions. There's some, okay, we got to do this, and then we got to do that, and we got to... We got to have the cart behind the horse. Amen. We don't always want to do that, but we get there's an order. When God's doing something, here's some instructions. March around the city. All the, not some, all the men of war, more details, going around the city once. Thus shall you do for six days. Seven priests shall bear seven trumpets of ram's horns before the ark. Very specific. Very detailed. What's the point? The point is, some of us haven't gotten that breakthrough because we skipped a step. God said, lay this down. God said, let her, him, go. God said, shut your mouth. <laughs> That's a hard one. How many know that? Amen. Be quiet. I skipped a step. They weren't supposed to say anything, right? Not at the beginning, right? What if they had said something? Would they have won? Seven priests shall bear seven trumpets of ram's horns before the ark. For those of you new to Christianity, this is not Noah's ark. They were not dragging Noah's ark around Jericho. Amen. This is the ark of the covenant that represented the presence of God. On the seventh day, you shall march around the city seven times. See the instructions. Okay, one time, six days, seventh day, seven times. So you got to keep an ear to the Lord. Just because he said you do it this way doesn't mean it's always going to be that way. Classic example of that is Abraham and Isaac, right? Hey, go to Mount Moriah. Sacrifice your son. This promise that you are now beholding. And I said, I'll make you the father of many nations. Now I want you to take that promise fulfilled. And I want you to sacrifice it to me. That's a word right there. Even though you get the marriage. Even though you get the job. Even though you get the kids. Even though you get the house. Whatever it is. Fill in the blank. You still have to. Offer it to God. Amen. Otherwise, it could become an idol, right? It could become an obsession. It could become unhealthy. A good thing could become a bad thing, right? As beauty is the eye of the beholder. And if it, and if it has your heart, it can be a bad thing. And it's good. Hey, I got this marriage, Lord. I give it to you. Lord, I got this job, Lord. And, and I wanted it, and I prayed for it, but now I hate it. <laughs> uh, welcome to the modern, modern living. Now, I'm going to... So, Hey, Lord, I'm sorry. I, I repent, Lord. I'm sorry for having a bad attitude. I'm sorry for not being grateful. I'm sorry for not keeping an eye on you. And I'm, now I'm going to give this back to you. I'm going to lay it down. I'm going to sacrifice it. You have to keep an ear to the instructions of the Lord because there is a, a progression in what he is usually doing. When they make... The trumpeters and the priests make a long blast with the ram's horn. Not short, long, again, a detail. When you hear the sound of the trumpet, then all the people shall shout. With what kind of shout? A great shout. So these warriors, the priest, the servants of the tabernacle, 
carrying the Ark of the Covenant there. First day, march around. Second day, march around. Sixth day, seventh day, march around seven times. And they get to the end and say, Yeah! <laughs> go, God! Can I get a J? No, a great shout! There's a difference. And when you're battling a devil, there's a difference of, get out. I don't want you around here anymore. No! Stop! There's a difference. The righteous are as bold as a lion. No! Well, so you see here, according to uh, Deuteronomy and the blessings and the curses, and then if you couple that with some of the Psalms and then so fulfillment of Christ of the New Testament, you're, you're obligated, sir. You're, you, you, can, you, can, you please, can you please leave? The door's over there. Do you mind locking it on the way out so none of your minions come? No. Thank you for the laughter. I like that. Makes me feel good about myself. Talking to you for an hour, at least I can do is try to make you laugh. Amen. Thank you for your spiritual appetite. Or your long suffering. I don't know. Maybe you're on that step of the nine steps. Fruit of the Spirit. Long suffering. No. Stop! A great out! No! I think you get it. <sighs> a great shout. And the promise, the wall of the city will fall down flat. This, I, oh, there's a lot of stuff I'd like to see on replay. Like Sports Center in heaven. Yeah, God, hey, yeah, let's do the Red Sea. Oh, oh that's awesome. Oh, yeah, sweet. That's cool. I want to see this. You know, just... The wall is just completely, oh, the sun stopped. Yeah, let's check out that day. Oh, fast forward. Okay, yeah. Can you replay that, God? Oh, that's cool. So Joshua, the son of Nun, called the priests and said to them, Take up the Ark of the Covenant and let seven priests bear seven trumpets of ram's horns before the Ark of the Lord. Josh, by Joshua's obedience and attention to detail, he makes this miracle and this breakthrough popular for the people honor those who labor among you and are over you in the Lord amen honor them you have no idea what kind of blessings you're going to get on the coattails of a preacher a pastor a teacher amen a worship leader his obedience and attention to detail made this miracle possible amen And he said to the people, go forward, march around the city, and let the armed men pass on before the ark of the Lord. And just as Joshua had commanded the people, the seven priests bearing the seven trumpets of ram's horns before the Lord went forward, blowing the trumpets with the ark of the covenant of the Lord following them, the armed men were walking before the priests. That was nice of them. Amen. <laughs> Who were blowing the trumpets. And the rear guard was walking after the ark while the trumpets blew continually. But Joshua commanded the people, you shall, shall not shout. See, there's a time and a season for everything. There's a time to be quiet. There's a time to shout. There's a time to wait. There's a time to move. And if you're not sensitive to that, you might miss a step. You might get ahead of the Lord, right? That's inferred. That's reading between the lines. That if you're not doing those things and how he's called you to do it and in the order, and if you don't have an ear to hear what the Lord is saying, you're probably going to get some things out of order and you're going to end up just frustrated. Do you need some examples of... <laughs> we all have examples of being frustrated, right? Right? 
It's usually because we don't get our way. That's usually a source of frustration. It doesn't go how we expect. You shall not shout or make your voice heard, neither shall any word go out of your mouth until the day I tell you to shout. Then you shall shout. Seems easy enough. So he caused the ark of the Lord to circle the city, going about it once. And they came into the camp and spent the night in the camp. Then Joshua rose early in the morning, and the priest took up the ark of the Lord, and the seven priests bearing the seven trumpets of ram's horns before the ark of the Lord walked on, and they blew the trumpets continually. And the armed men were walking before them, and the rear guard was walking after the ark of the Lord while the trumpets blew continually. So there's an order. These guys and these guys. And, and there's an order in deliverance. When you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, forgive. And then your Father who is in heaven will forgive you your trespasses. If you do that backwards, it doesn't work. It's unreasonable to, to want deliverance, but, but withhold that from someone else. And a lot of us want our cake, and we want to eat it too. We want to hold it, and we want to eat it. We want to have it last for tomorrow, but we want to eat it today. We want to hold our cake and eat it too. And we want freedom for us, but we're not willing to let other people go. And I don't know what it is, and I don't know how it works, but something spiritually happens when you let someone go. Something happens. There's something that's going to happen in their life because you let them go. Something spiritually, a domino falls in their lives and there's a greater chance for them to get saved. Now, honestly, I, I believe that. There's something that happens when, when you drop that stone, when you turn your cheek, when you give even though they've stolen, when you don't take them to court. When you don't tell them all the wrong things that they did and said, when they are the ones that wronged you, there's something spiritual that happens in their life, but more importantly, in your life. And we can't expect to get set free if we're not willing to let go of other people. It doesn't make sense. Lord, free me. Lord, heal me. Lord, deliver me. But man, if you could just have the, all their tires go flat. And the garage door fall. Oh, yeah, let's not go too far. <laughs> right, right? You can't, like, that doesn't work that way. There's an order. There's, when you forgive, you're forgiven. Right? There's an order. Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and these things will be added to you. You can't just go around like it's a convenience store and pick up whatever you want and walk out. There's an order. There's an order with the Lord. You come to the cross, you're supposed to lay your life down. You're like, that's it. I'm firing myself. I was a terrible self-manager. I couldn't even manage my own life. And I'm not speaking in proxy. I'm speaking for me. I couldn't even manage my own life. I stunk at it. But pride and vanity and forgetfulness and you know you walk away from the cross and you know things start going well you start feeling good about yourself and you're like hey may maybe I can manage my life again no <laughs> you can't <laughs> I can't and he says okay you 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 want to follow me you got to lay down your life and if you want to find life you need to lose it right isn't this what he said so you can't hold on to your life. You can't keep your life. You can't save your life and get all the good stuff. It don't work that way. There's an order. God has an order. Amen? Is this helping somebody? Before you go to pray, what are you supposed to do? You're supposed to check your heart first, right? Lord, if there be anything in me, right? 
And the honest to God truth, that's the greatest thing to get you set free is letting go of those things in there. Those are the things that are holding you down. Those are the things that are tormenting you. Those are the things that are giving the enemy a, a point of leverage in your life. Because you're holding on to those things. And the accuser of the brethren can stand there and look at Father God and say, look, they're not letting go. They haven't forgiven. And God, what's God going to say? No, you're a liar? Well, of course he's a liar, but they're gonna, he's going to say, yeah, you're right. He, knows, he does know better. She does know better. We can't, it doesn't work. We have to let it go. We have to lay down our lives. Amen. We have to humble ourselves before God. There's all these things that that's how you grease the wheel spiritually. Amen. A lot of walking, a lot of trumpets. <laughs> For those of you just tuning in. And the second day they marched around the city once and returned to the camp. They did for six days. And on the seventh day they rose early at the dawn of day and marched around the city in the same manner seven times. It was only on that day that they marched around the city seven times. And at the seventh time when the priest had blown the trumpets, Joshua said to the people, Shout, for the Lord has given you the city. There comes a point in time where you're going to sense it in your spirit that the tide has turned, that God's grace is on your life. You feel the anointing, that victory that you've been wanting, that has been eluding you, that has been just out of your fingers' grasp. And that is the moment, and you sense it, and you feel it, and you turn to the devil, and you say, Go! No! Out! Stop! Enough! When people yell, you, you, things change. Even when it's not spiritual, things change. The environment changes. People's attention change. Their words change. When you yell, things change in the environment, in the natural. That stems from the spiritual. Everything we experience in the natural has its birth in the spiritual. The patterns, the principles, they come down. We, we, were, we were created out of the spiritual realm. Amen. Earth was spoken out of the spiritual realm into the natural. It cannot create things or introduce things or originate things in and of itself. It has to stem out of the spiritual realm, out of the kingdom. Amen. These principles are there. This is a principle in the word of God and it's showing you in black and white so that you can take hold of it and use it in your life to take control of your mind. To take control over the promised land. Amen. Over the city of the world that has God's blessings for you. That's, that's how it works. Amen. The city and the, all that is within it shall be devoted to the Lord for destruction. Only Rahab, the prostitute, and all who are with her in her house shall live. Lineage of Christ. Right? It's almost like, I, I don't know, I can't speak with absolute certainty, but it's almost like he let, Father God let, all these different curses and sinful behaviors into the line. Prostitute, adultery, murder, religion. He just kept folding them in. It's not too much. It's not too it's not too much. It's not too much. Abortion. Suicide. Self-hate. Curse after curse after curse after curse. Blaspheming God rolled it in to the line of Jesus and he nailed it to the cross. And he just... Whoosh, Took the whole bag. 
It's a beautiful thing. He did it for them. He can do it for us. Hallelujah. But you keep yourselves from the things devoted to destruction, lest when you have devoted when you have devoted them, you take any of the devoted things and make the camp of Israel a thing for destruction. Is that what happened? Yes, right? Achan, he hid it under the tent and they lost the battle of Ai. So what, that's, that's a teaching point right there. Victory, victory. Why am I not getting any more victories? Well, is something hidden under your tent? Are you holding on to something from another battle you were supposed to let go, even if it was a trophy? <laughs> Good job whooping up on Jericho. Oh, look at me. That's how Rick walks, right? Did I get the Rick walk? <laughs> look at me. Everybody loves Rick. You can't not love Rick. Except the devil. So, you know, that's, that's it. There's an order. There's, there's instruction. There's detail. The details matter with the Lord. <gasps> I can't believe it. Everything is so perfectly balanced in this earth. And all this wildlife from the bottom of the seas to the heavens to the North Pole, the South Pole, the top of the mountain, down to the bottom of a swamp. He's got wildlife stuffed everywhere. Every creature you could imagine, every color, every... He's a detailed guy. And he says, don't take it, don't take it. He says, leave it, you leave it, amen. And you may not be getting that breakthrough. You may be having that AI moment, and you'll be like, why am I stuck? Do you have something hidden under your tent? Is there something you're holding on to that you're supposed to let go? If you brought any small kids or animals please make sure they're not biting the electrical lines outside <laughs> and this happens to all of us amen like oh yep i gotta lay that down oh that offense that hurt that disappointment i gotta lay it down so i can keep moving forward amen so the people shouted and the trumpets were blown and as soon as the people heard the sound of the trumpet, the people shouted a great shout. Lord, help your people have a great shout. Don't be intimidated by the devil. Don't be confused. You stand up there like a bright-eyed rookie and you swing for the fences, okay? Don't be intimidated. Don't be bashful. I come against that spirit of intimidation right now in Jesus' name. Stop it. Second guessing, double guessing, wondering, confused. No in the name of Jesus. Stand up there. Swing for the fences, young man, young woman. God is with you. If he's for you, who can be against you? Amen? Come on, stand up there. Don't be shy. Let them have it. Things change when you shout. They're serious. You ever been arguing with somebody and they just let off and holler at you? Yeah, that's why I come here on Fridays. Amen. <laughs> you should see my five-year-old. No. And you're like, oh, okay, cross the line. I'm gonna... Things change when you shout. Paul, I know. Jesus, I know. But who are you? Shut up! That's who I am! I wouldn't even say that. I'll... Stop! No! As soon as I hear that whisper or that thought, no! I don't even, I don't even let my mind go there. 
And I'm not saying I, I'm perfect and I hit it, the ball out of the park every time. I'm not saying that. But I'm saying you can get to a place where you have the rhythm and the flow and you can roll with the punches. And I was driving down here. It's crazy. One of the craziest things I've seen driving. I was in the right lane and there was a stoplight and there was three or four cars in front of me, okay? And, I, you know, I'm kind of, do, you know, looking to see what song I want to listen to and slowing down. And this dude puts on his blinker, turns in front of me, and then he's going to a gas station. I'm like, oh, 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 it look, yep, yep, he's going for it. And he cuts the corner. He literally cut me off to cut a corner. <laughs> he went from the middle lane, through the right lane, and through the gas station. And I said, I said no. Because what's, what's the devil trying to do? Trying to get me offended. Trying to get me distracted. Trying to wish bad things happen to that person. I don't have to wish bad things happen to that person. That's obvious bad things are going to happen to that person. Amen? <laughs> he's living like a fool. Sooner or later. <laughs> but you, you can get a sense of it and you're having your discernment trained by constant practice. You can say, oh, this, oh, yeah, the, oh, this is a trap. This, oh, yeah, it's got my name on it. <laughs> I'm going to go over here. And you say, no, don't even let the thought get into your mind. It's condemning you, condescending, bring, bring up your, uh, no. Stop. As soon as the people heard the sound of the trumpet, the people shouted a great shout. Come on, Lord. I pray for boldness. I come against any and all confusion in Jesus' name. Timidity. Bashfulness, stop it. No, you are a child of the most high God. You are an ambassador for Christ. He sends you out in front of him to do his business. And then he comes through and confirms it with signs, miracles, and wonders. You are chosen. You are holy. You are righteous. You are loved. You are beloved. You have the favor of God. You have eternal security. You shouldn't be backing down. They should be backing down. No! Oh. She means business. Before. Oh, yeah, that sounds like an interesting, temptuous thought. And no, I'm going to tell you, devil, why you're wrong. And I'm going to explain it to you. And next thing you know, you're like a little kitten in knots. The only thing you've done is gotten yourself more tangled up. Don't even go there. The archangel Michael, what did he do? He just said to the devil, the Lord rebuke you. The Lord rebuke you. Rebuke seems like it should get twice, right? Four words. Don't go carrying on with the devil. You cannot win an argument with the devil. You know, they call him the devil's advocate, right? When you're talking with somebody, well, well, did you think about this? What did you think about that? Well, have you ever done that? Well, 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 stop! Now, if you're talking to a person, you don't say that. Right? But don't go carrying on with the devil. This guy I was working with the other day. This guy is so, he's one of the most miserable souls in the whole world. And it's sad. Like anything you say, it just, you, the devil's just got him so wrapped. Can't take a compliment, can't give a compliment, can't, you know. I, I, finally, I felt like the Lord was saying, like, somebody was told him repeat, like, he always wanted to be right. He wants to be right. And then if, and if you're right about something, he blows it off. Like, ah, well, yeah, that's, that's common knowledge. You're an idiot. You should be as smart as me, he says. <laughs> that's his actions, right? Like, Lord, what is this? You got to tell me all this information and show himself so smart. I'm like, 
We're contractors. Let's get the job done, okay? <laughs> I came here to work, not chit-chat. I want to get the job done. I want to get paid, and I want to get home. Thank you very much. I'm a contractor. He wants to show himself smart. And I just felt like the Lord impressed upon me that somebody told him a lot when he was a child. You're such an idiot. You're so stupid. You're so dumb. And here he is still operating out of that place of hurt. You got to lay those things down. You got to invite God into the deep places. And you know what? If you don't, you know what he would say? If you were abused, if you aborted a baby, if you took a man's life and you say, Lord, no, 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 no. No, Lord, this is, no, I'm too wretched. I'm too filthy. You know what the Lord would say? The same thing he said to Peter. If you don't let me into there, I've got no part in you. And you got no part with me. The Lord doesn't care about dirty toes he cares about those hidden places in our lives that smell and are nasty and are overlooked and and mistreated he cares about the dirty toes in your soul and in your heart and in your mind and he says hey sister if i can't operate on those we're not that close and that what he said with peter Peter's, wash all of me. You know, that's what Peter said. <laughs> Whoa, okay. I wonder, what's Peter thinking? Okay, all right. Man, the first case, documented case of, what does it say? Foot and mouth disease, right, Peter? You got, you got to bring it, honey. You got you to let light shine on that thing. A wise man once said, tell the truth, shame the devil. You got a, a lady told me today. Hope she's not watching. <laughs> she's Jewish, we're safe. <laughs> I don't know. Stranger things have happened. She said, hey, you know, this is what happened to my husband, and this is, you know, don't tell anybody. And I said, okay, hold, could you repeat that? So I'm gonna check my, make sure I'm not missing anything. And I said, okay. And I said, well, I said, the devil got him. And then she said something else. I said, you know, sometimes it, it helps to share things you've gone through. You know? So, I think we could be a little bit more open with what we've done and what's been done to us and I think the Lord is going to work in those areas. And as we open it up. Ingredients for spiritual victories. And you look at the story of Jericho. You might come up with other things. This list is not exhaustive. If you want to email somebody, email Brother Mike or Kelly. God's plan. We see God's plan in action. He wanted to take this city. He wants victory in your life. There's things, there's mountains for you to conquer. There's new territory to take hold of. There's curses to be broken. Amen. And you say, well, why is this? You know, my, my poverty and this and, you know, terrible with money and why I'm getting these bills and this and you know, I can't get out of it and blah. And, you, know, the, the, you know, hey, maybe you're supposed to be the curse buster. Just like Jesus, he took those things and nailed them to the cross. Maybe you have the awareness of what it is. You know, so, you know, a lot of stuff tied to masonry, fear masonry and things like that or different religions and different stuff like that. And you're aware of it like, man, oh, shucks, God, why do I have to bear this burden? Wait, 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 hold on, time out. Why can't you be the one that breaks it? Why can't you be the one that ushers in a new blessing into your lineage? Amen. God's plan, God's order. There was an order, God's presence. You know, I, Talk to different people about deliverance and there's, 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 you know, everyone's trying to get set free and I don't blame anyone for trying. And there's different methods and techniques and some people, it's like a shotgun thing. 
and they'll listen to tapes and they'll do this and, and, and they'll go through and it's, you know, you know, Deuteronomy 28, 29 or, you know, this or that. Or they'll go through in order and coming against things. And there's nothing wrong with that. But, I mean, if, if, it's not, if God's not appointed it to be the time of that victory, then nothing's going to happen. I and mean, we see in the Bible, Jacob was wrestling the angel of the Lord. And he was like, bless me, bless me, bless me. And he got a blessing, but he also got a limp. So he's like, hey, we can do this your way. And I will honor that. And I'm a good father. And if you persist like the neighbor, like knocking on the door because someone came to visit and they didn't have enough. And, but, but because of his persistence, he gave to the neighbor, right? And the Lord will do that. You know, there's no doubt about it. And, and God can redeem those things and fold them in and make a beautiful story out of it. Amen. But if, if I want to be moving where God's moving. You know, if you ever have the uh, fortunate situation of ministering to somebody, counseling with somebody, try to find out, give you, give you a hint. And I'm, I'm far from the best at it, but I'll give you something that I've learned. Find out where God's moving in their life. The easy thing to do is to look at their situation and they tell you, I'm struggling with this and I did this. And you say, okay, well, what do I know from the Bible? Or what do I know from my life? And regurgitate that out to them. That's the easy thing to do. We all do it. Amen. And, I, and, and if I catch myself doing that, I say, hey, look, this is what God did for me. And he's going to do something com probably, well, he's going to do something completely unique for you. There might be some elements of what he did for me he's going to do for you. But in general, it's going to be a, a unique story for you, a unique breakthrough. But if you, if you get beyond that, you can get to a place of like, okay, where, God, where are, you, where are you at in their life? What are you trying to accomplish what are you speaking to them and so now you're you're coupling you're there with God's presence how many know when you first got saved if you grew up in the world you first got saved God didn't give you a hundred things to do in a hundred days or you die right or you're out of the club no no you got to go back to hell we don't want you no you don't you don't you don't you're not up to snuff he doesn't do that what does he do he works on one thing at a time right so if you're counseling somebody, what's that one thing God is speaking to them about? See, there's God's presence. So, you know, I, I want to be free from anything and everything. Amen. I don't want any, I don't want any open door to the devil, right? None of us do. But the but if, if God is moving on me about letting something go or laying, that's where I'm gonna get the victory for sure. That's the best odds. Because his presence is there. And, I, and I've talked to people and they've done the cast out tapes and they go, blah, 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 you know, and that's your thing and it works for you. God bless you. I'm not saying it's, you know, throw it out with, with the, the bathwater, you know, but I'm saying, and I talked to some of them and they're like, well, I did it, everything. I did it for a year. And, you know, and I thought I was done. Well, you didn't learn to hear God. You didn't learn the ebbs and flows. You didn't develop a relationship with the Lord to be responsive to the area that he's working in your life. You just sat and worked it like a program, and you said, I've worked it for a year. I've done everything else for a year. I'm good. I'm checked out. See you later. Sayonara. And now you hell came to dinner, and you want to kill yourself. True story. Like, listen. When God moves, move. Find out where he's moving. Where's the troubled water? The pool of Siloam, right? He tells the one guy, he says, go dip in the Jordan River seven times. Well, that's where I'm going. <laughs> is, this, is this helping anybody? You want to get into that rhythm, but that's your developing the relationship. Hey, he's going to come a day and just say, hey, look, oh, Praise the Lord, this is the demon slayer. He was prophesying in my name. He was healing the sick. He was speaking in a new tongue. Who in the world is he? I never knew him. I never knew him. He was just working the program. He was just grabbing the fruit and passing it out. He was doing it for himself. He never really understood. It wasn't about the activity it was about that relationship that you can have with the creator of the universe who hung the stars in the sky who calls the sun to rise and set 
who feeds every living thing on the face of the earth, 365. That's the one, the magnificent one, the mighty one, the holy one, the righteous one. You get to have fellowship with him. And if you work deliverance like a program, if you work Christianity like a program, you're going to get tired, you're going to get wore out, and you're liable just to walk away. But if, if you find that true hidden treasure, like that coin, like that pearl, and you say, I don't want anything else. I don't need my spouse's acceptance. I don't need the money. I don't need the fame, the fortune, the recognition, the notoriety. They can say whatever they want to say about me. I found the pearl. I found the coin. Is that, come on, is that helping you? And, and when we do, when we follow his presence, he's going to lead us on that path. And he's going to, he knows what steps you need to take. He knows the things that you need to get. He knows what you need before you ask him. And he says, I got a plan and you won't be able to see it. You won't know it, but you'll, you're going to experience it. And we're going to build a bond. That's what he's about. So I encourage you, yeah, you take the first step. Draw nigh unto God and he'll draw nigh. Lord, I'm open. I'm all yours. Search me like a floodlight. I give it to you. I give my kids to you. I give my marriage to you. I give my hopes and my dreams, my business, and I give it to you. But then when he pinpoints something, that's where you want to be. God uses... 99 times out of 100, his people. And we see in Jericho, we had our praise, our faith, and that final triumphant, that shout. The, the nail in the coffin was the shout. It can be the key that opens the chains. When we were, that's all, folks. When we raise our voices, it becomes apparent that we are asserting our will into and over the circumstances in and around us. People take notice. Spirits take notice. Well, you know, okay, what page is it on? Okay, let me send an email. What scripture was that? Okay, well, uh, uh, you're supposed to leave. No. Stop! Shout it out. Get that thing out. You have so much anointing that you can shout in your mind without even people hearing. You have that authority. When I pray for people at the altar, that's one of the things I'll do. I say, now, I'm praying for you, and I'm going to lay my hands, and I'm going to do a proxy prayer, and I'm just trying to be sent to the Holy Spirit or maybe things that you've told me. <clears throat> but in your mind, if something resonates, go at it. And you yell at that thing. And it works. It's the shout. Like, they, they take notice. They're like, whoa, oh, she's serious. Oh, whew, okay. All right. And you just naturally step back. That doesn't come from the natural world. That comes from the spiritual world. <laughs> we didn't create it. The Son of Man will be coming, the clouds of heaven, with power and great glory, and he will send his angels out with a loud trumpet call. There's that, the trumpet, the loudness, the, the, that spiritual principle of noise, loud noise. Now, it's not the loud noise that gets them out, right? Some people, they think, that, oh, it's because I'm yelling. No. It's because you're taking control of the situation. You know your authority in Christ and you're not taking no for an answer and you're not up for debate. You're not up for discussion. You're not up for bartering, begging, borrowing, or stealing. No, you're drawing the line in the sand and you're telling the devil, out! No! Amen? I tell you a mystery, we shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed 
in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet. The trumpet will sound. There's that. I practiced that all week. How did it sound? Did it sound okay? This is, man, this, you, you guys need to marinate on Revelation 1 right here if you have not done that. This is one of the coolest sections of text in all the Bible. Then I turn to see, this is the revelator, John. It's the revelation of Jesus Christ. The voice that was speaking to me, and on turning, I saw seven golden lampstands, and in the midst of the lampstands, one like a son of man, clothed with a long robe and a golden sash around his chest. The hairs on his head were white like wool. His eyes were like a flame of fire. That's, that, that's pretty cool. His feet were like burnished bronze. I mean, just glowing. His voice was like the roar of many waters. Loud, thundering. You have that authority. He is your father. He's your savior. You're made in his likeness and image. Amen. He goes with you. He will test. He will. He will. Um, Confirm the word with signs and wonders. Amen. This is the one. He has that thunderous voice, that loud voice. He wants you to have a loud voice. You do not need to be timid. You do not need to be shy. You do not need to be bashful. That is playing into the hands of the devil. Like, no, you have a right. Have you asked Jesus to be your savior? Have you asked God to forgive you? Then he is trespassing. If somebody broke into your house and they, you, were, you were in there, how would you respond? You'd be mad as a hornet. Especially if your kids were there. Prized possessions. Or you're in the middle of streaming Netflix. You would be mad. The jokes are extra, amen. You would let him have it. You would let that guy have it. If, if, you, if you were between him and your kids, let the devil have it. You're between him and your soul, him and your eternity, him and your, your plan and purpose and your calling. It's mano y mano. Let him have it. Show him who's boss. You have the authority. You have the calling. You have the promises. You have the truth. You have the knowledge. You have the assurance. He's got none of that. He's got none of that. He only has what we let him have. If we think he's got the ace of spades, he's got it because we think it. And that's reality for you. He's got me beat. The reality, he don't have it. You have it. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a cry of command. Oh. Calismo. One time in the Bible. This is a scripture that came to me Sunday during worship. One time in the, it's like, oh, yes. One time in the Bible. Calismo. An order, a command. Specifically, a stimulating cry. Arise! Go! Now! 
There's something like that. Get them, boys! Like, it, 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 whoa, that's it. Could you imagine? I mean, all the angels, all the saints in heaven, they're sitting around waiting forever and ever, and like, okay, when's this? Okay, come on, the pot's boiling down there. It's horrible. Oh, my goodness. What are they doing to people these days? Frankenstein is real. I mean, come on. Take this, put this, add, subtract, boom. But okay, come on, what's going on down there? This thing's about to boil over. And, and there's going to and there's going to be that shout, a cry of command. Amen. That is taking control of the situation, ushering in the kingdom of God with using your authority unabashedly. I come against the spirit of timidity. I come against bashfulness. Being fearful and intimidated and confused. There's lies, 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 lies. Stop. What if bigger, stronger, faster, better, richer, older? What? What if? They're just bullies. It's a bully. What do you do to a bully? You stand up to him. Give him a taste of his own medicine. Instead of you getting roughed around, instead of you getting picked on, you stand up to that, right? You say, not today. No more, big guy. You stand up to them. He's just, they're, they're bullies. They don't have the goods. They're bullies. Bullies hurt people, hurt people. They're broken. They're scared. They know they're going to lose. They know their fate. They know, why did you come to torture us before the time, Jesus? Why did, why? Right? They, they know. They can <laughs> smell it in the air. They're going to lose. That's just the reality. It's a bluff. They're bullies. They're not giants. They're bullies. They're not bigger, stronger, tougher than you. No, you have Christ. It's a demonic persona. They use manipulation. First of all, I'm talking about them operating in people, okay? They use manipulation. They tell you all these great things about you, but then behind your back, they're critical fault finding. When you see them to your face, they flatter you. But you know what flattery is? Veiled hostility. The devil hates your guts. And they might tell you how great you are and how special you are, but inside, those spirits and those people hate you. They detest you. But you know what? There's good news. They're just a bully. It's a facade. There's not any true strength there. You know what's inside a bully? Insecurity. They're afraid. And they should be because you have the author of life, the king of kings, the prince of peace, the great I am inside of you. They should be afraid. Not you, them. You tell them what to do. Amen. Amen. They seem very confident, but if you, if you get your discernment trained up and you can see it's laden with insecurities, like my friend who was, you know, Mr. Smarty Pants, because he wants to come across as smart. He doesn't know and have peace of who he is. So he has to portray that and cast that. That's veiled 
insecurities and fear of rejection. Am I helping anybody? You present a certain way because you're not sure, but you know what you want and you, you need it validated. Do we do that, don't we, people? You get that validation from Christ, amen. You go sit at your Father's feet, amen. Let him love on you. Let him shower you, amen. Let him take care of you. And then you can stand up and then you can see through that bully and you can say, wow, they are hurt, broken, afraid. They seem unfazed, but they're really worried. They're really scared. They're really confused. They can't, they, they, it's impossible for them to be truly confident because they're standing on lies. On Christ the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. The whole devil's army is on sinking sand. It's not a matter of if, it's only a matter of when. They operate through fear and intimidation and manipulation, telling you what you want to hear. That's why you got to guard your heart. If you're so eager for someone to notice you, and then you might fall into that trap, and they're just weaving their web. It's not a bully like when you're an adult. It's not a bully like on a playground. There are people in our lives that are trying to manipulate us and control us. They're not really for us. They'll tell you what you want to hear, but you know, you know, because, you know, why do they say this over here? It doesn't seem genuine. They're not really listening to me. Yeah, they're only listening to themselves. Is this helping anybody? There's, there's going to come a time where you're going to have to stand up to them. One day, one time. But you, that you got to have your heart right. It's not every day, all the time. I saw this grandma, and she was babysitting your a grandson, and he was acting like a six-year-old kid, pitching a fit, and she wasn't much better herself. She might have been right, but she would just trying to reason with a six-year-old kid, Thre threaten to call the cops on your grandson, six years old. That's empty. It's an empty threat. But what she, she's doing every, every time that she opens her mouth, every time that her bruised ego gets in the way and starts running her trap, she is making, helping the devil to make a monster because she thinks it's every day that I need to battle this giant. It's not every day. What if it was just one day that you were supposed to stand up? What if it's just one time that you were supposed to call them out for who they are? I want to do that on God's day, not mine. And I may never do it. It may not be my job. It may be somebody else's. But they're vulnerable to faith, boldness, and the truth. Bullies, demons, giants, all of the above, they don't have any of this stuff. Like we, we think it's like, oh, you know, I'm faddling and I'm fighting and, you know, this and that. Like, like you have to realize they don't have this stuff. They don't have eternal security. The wisdom of God. 
the power of God, the presence, the power of praise, the gifts of the Spirit, the love that we get. They don't have any of that. It's a paper tiger. They have what we give them. You should have boldness, confidence. The righteous are as bold as a lion. Don't back down. Don't take no for an answer. You shout it out. You let him know who's boss. This was the plan from the beginning. Have dominion over everything. Have dominion over the devil. Exercise authority. Rule over it. You say, he's not on that list. Yeah, there's cre creeping things. <laughs> he's creepy. Let me introduce you to my dog. Hi, my name is Pumpkin. That's my dog. I can officially write my country song now. Got a dog and a pickup truck. Oh, they don't make country like they used to, so I don't know. Kelly, I need a new profession. Why do I have this cute dog up here? This dog's a good dog. He's a smart dog. And he's a good dog because I've trained him well. And part of training well is... Discipline, rewards, but someone can say sit. <laughs> it doesn't work as much as sit. It's the tone. It's the tone. What is your tone with the devil? I asked the Holy Spirit to show you that. Like, are you someone who's coming across meek and mild and unsure? Or are you like, no, that promise is mine. No, in Jesus' name. I bind you, cancer. I bind you, sickness. In the mighty name of Jesus, out! There's a difference. I bind you, cancer. I bind you, mental illness. And... <laughs> There's a difference. We do deliverance prayer up here, and I'm, I'm blown away. I'm sure none of you, none of the, this describes none of you, none of you here, here tonight. And they don't utter a word. They, I mean, literally, we could put a mannequin here and get those googly, oogly eyeballs that move around and dart and look and see who's looking and who's paying attention. We could do that and have the same effect. Now, granted, I don't... What I know is probably a hill of beans compared to the knowledge that is out there. And this person might be, you know, getting revelation and, and coming against the, the devil uh, in their mind. But I'm amazed at how many people come here to get deliverance and just stand and don't say a thing. Like, no, like your voice is powerful. Words are powerful. And powerful words are even more powerful. And you're going to have to get some skin in the game. You're going to have to go stand on a limb. And you're going to have to tell that devil who's boss. Because if you don't take control and command of the situation, he's going to say like, oh, this is just wishful thinking. We got this, we got this puppy wrapped. Like, you, you have to fight. Like, they don't want to let go. I don't know how many times I've been praying for people for deliverance. And I just get a sense and a feeling they've got claws in this person. They're holding on for dear life. They don't want to get cast out. What did Jesus say? They're like wandering. They're like vagabonds. Strung out, wandering around, looking for a home like all these homeless people we have in quick trips. In Peoria put in a new quick trip. Apparently they want homeless people out there. I, you know, I, just, you know. I digress. And I sure Kelly can attest to this, and anybody that's on the prayer team for a while, you get a sense that they're, they're holding on for dear life. He said they wander around waterless places looking to find a home, and they come back to see, oh, there's our home. There was where we were. We had an open door there before. Maybe they started walking away. Maybe they turned back from the Lord. Maybe they didn't keep it clean. Why, it was clean, but it was empty. No, Jesus. It was that relationship we were talking about earlier. It was that intimacy. There was a, there was, there was a strong man in the house with you. That had your back.
And they come back and you say no. You don't second guess yourself and wonder what did I do? What did I open the door? What, how deep did I need to go? I, maybe I didn't do enough deliverance. And now you're on your heels, you're backpedaling. If someone's backpedaling, a kid can push them over with one finger. You're like, no! Stop it! I'll, I'll handle this. I'll clean this up with the Lord later. We'll figure it out later. If there's something that I need to do that I'm out of line with the Lord, you can bet your bottom dollar he's going to let me know. Gently, quietly, and every so often. Right? He doesn't badger you. He doesn't consent you. He doesn't remind you of your past and what you... No, that's not the Lord. Stop! If there's something else you need to work it out with the Lord later, work it out with the Lord later. But you exercise authority and command over the animals the same way you would do over the spiritual world. We get our natural patterns and principles from the spiritual world and we usher a great shout and we take command and we use authority and we tell it what to do. You tell the thief what to do. You don't listen to him. You don't listen to his lies. You tell the animal what to do. Stop listening to the devil. No. Don't do it. Somebody rings on the door and we don't even open our doors anymore. But if I were to, I wouldn't even open the door. I would lock it, right? Oh, look at that bad guy out there. Instead, what was that devil? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Don't even open the door. As soon as it, no. Did it come from within or out? I don't really give a rip. You tell it what to do. You take command and control of your life. It's your responsibility. You have that right. You have the authority. Think about these things. You choose what you think about and what you don't think about. And if it stinks, and it's telling you how awful you are, unless you're married to them, don't open the door. Don't open the door. We don't open the door. What do you do in your email? Junk mail, junk mail, junk mail, junk mail, junk mail. Delete, 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 delete. You go to the mailbox. What do you do? Junk, 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 keeper, junk, 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 keeper. Why don't we do that with our thoughts? Well, yeah, yeah, you make a good point. Yeah, back in 92, I did do that. Yeah, that's, that's pretty lowly of me. Uh, yeah, you kind of get, I guess, I guess I should be suffering. Stop! One suffered for all. Amen. One suffered once and for all. The Lord Jesus. I say goodbye, pumpkin. <laughs> discernment, 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 discernment. Discernment, 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 discernment. Pray for discernment. Discernment, discernment, discernment. Discerning, dividing, dissecting, good and evil. You have to have discernment. Discernment, you have to know that's not God. I've told the story a few times about mishearing the voice of God, and I fasted for it for a year, about once a week, and, and I, I got a big spiritual waylay, and I... Way off track. And so I was, I was like, nope. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear the voice. Not like I was turning my back on God, but that was not the thing I was pursuing anymore. So I focused on other things, focused on, you know, you know godly things and things like that. I, ke I kept, you know, uh, I, I kept looking forward to my face to flit. Amen. I kept looking forward. Amen. Did not look back. Did not turn my be uh, back. I just kept. So, okay, I'm not going to try to find God up here. I'm just going to keep my hands in the posture. And I started to hear God in here. In my spirit. Instead of here. Now, I, I use my mind for understanding to grasp the concepts and ideas, dreams and visions and revelation that God is bubbling up from my spirit I, I you know you got to use your mind amen but it's not where i'm pursuing him 
And so that big roundabout journey of like, I want to hear your voice, God. I want to hear your voice. I want to hear your voice. And the devil came in and said, here's your voice. She's the one. Hey. <laughs> it's funny because I was at the Dream Center at the time. And uh, it, was, it turned out to be a nightmare. But anyways, I was at the Dream Center at the time. I, I'm kidding. That's, I was being facetious. And I, so I went in, and after the fact, I went in and talked to one of the security guys who was in for, he enforces, you know, punishment and things like that. And so someone said she's the one or whatever. And I was like, like, yeah, that happened to me. <laughs> and, yeah. Nobody's too good to be wrong, right? And, and I said, uh, asking for a friend, you know, curious here. Uh, you mentioned that that uh, happened. How often she's the one? All the time. <laughs> like, oh. And the devil will do that. And on one word, one stray word, she's the one, he's the one. And right up, brush right up to hell. <laughs> but that roundabout journey, what was God doing? He was teaching me how to hear his voice. He answered my prayer. Because I had to, just like learning a dollar bill for a banker, I had to know what was counterfeit. And that was counterfeit. And then I knew, oh, shoot. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. God's not this chatterbox in my head carrying on a conversation with me all day about what to shop, what to wear, what to eat, where to park, what to say. He ain't up there. And this, you get that impression. You get the sense. You get the inkling or inclination. You, it, it just resonates. It rings true. It's from within. It's eternal. It's natural. It's, and you're like, you get the concept, like, you get the sense. Like, he doesn't say, you need to call Uncle Joe and tell him you're sorry that you crashed his car. And then after that, ask him if he wants to go get a bite to eat to smooth things over. God doesn't do that. You just get the sense, I need to, I, oh, I need to call Uncle Joe and apologize. And your mind understands that, but it, that was not how it was presented to you. It was a sense, like it was, oh, oh, yeah, that's, oh, yeah. Yeah, I need to call. Oh, okay, yeah, and let's, I'll, tra I'll trade them to a steak dinner because, eh, a couple thousand dollars car repair, steak dinner, fair trade. <laughs> Discernment. So the key here is a living sacrifice. You're going, you're putting yourself out there. You're being vulnerable. You're giving yourself to God. Like I was talking to him earlier about laying your life down, laying your dreams down, laying your hopes down. That's a living sacrifice. Renewing your mind that you may, by testing, is it okay to test God? You bet you can. Many false prophets have gone out into the world. You better test that word. By the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word shall be. You better test that word. God's not intimidated by that just because you want to get it right. Don't let the devil trick you on that. It's a bluff. He lies. That by testing you may discern what is the will of God. Philippians 1.10, so that you may approve what's excellent. All discernment. The end of verse 9. And you get that discernment. You get that sense, okay, this is the, and you don't even open the door. You don't even entertain the thought. You're just like, no. You, sh you just, boom. Like a mosquito lands on you and starts sucking blood out of your arm. What do you do? You swat it. Well, some demon lands on your brain and starts sucking the life out of you. What do you do? Swat that thing. Don't sit there and say, oh, 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 oh. well, demons got to eat too. Stop being so nice. Everyone who lives on milk is unskilled. Babies. <sighs> Feeding babies is the worst. Spit up on you. Got a burp. That's okay to start there. It's not okay to stay there. It's not okay to stay as a child. Solid food is the meat is for the mature, for those who have their powers of discernment trained. Constant practice. 
Oh, now, oh, I get it, Lord. That's why I got that job. Okay, yeah, that's a lot of work. That's why I had to work with that awfully nice, difficult to get along with guy. He's helping, he's helping, Lord's using to help pay my bills, praise the Lord. But God is using those situations and circumstances to train you. So your discernment is on par and see, no, oh, that's the devil, out, shout it out. You got to be hip to it. You can't have your head in your sand. You got to be aware of what's going on. It's like people don't want to watch the news because it's just a bunch of bad news. Well, it, it helps to know what's going on in the world to be a little informed. And okay, if you don't want to watch the news, I get that. But you better be watching the spiritual news, if you get what I mean, to be able to discern what is good. Knowing the truth, doing the truth sets you free. Right? The devil will never operate in truth because he knows the truth will set you free. He's never going to come at you with the truth. He may use a fact. You ugly. You stink. You full of pride. Whatever. That's not the whole story. Yeah, but Jesus has forgiven me. Yeah, but he's healing me. Yeah, but he's renewing me. Yeah, but he who has begun a good work in me is faithful to finish the day of completion. Amen. But you know, if it's a lie, you shout to get it out and you take command and control of that situation and you tell the devil no come on you know when it's him you know it doesn't feel right doesn't seem right doesn't make sense well why would God tell me to do this? maybe it wasn't God we can turn down the lights and if there's any questions feel free to ask but please don't ask me something I don't know because it's embarrassing and I feel horrible about it for like the whole week. I'm like, dang it, I should have, could have had a better answer there. But I'm here to, here to serve. And if there's anything that is on your heart, or we, can, we can answer. We can, we can discuss that. Okay. Prayer team, let's not pass out the rocks tonight. Thank you. I don't know if we have some music back there, Kelly. Putting her on the spot here. Let's see how good she is. We know Kelly's amazing. See if she can get some some music. Let's get the presence of God. I think most of you know already the area that God wants you to be more assertive amen to stand up to take control and command of the situation not be shy I want you to right now look at me do you accept Jesus Christ as your personal savior for the forgiveness of your sins yes you trust him and him alone for your eternal security Yes, God. You've asked him to forgive you of your sins. Amen. Yes. And he has removed them as far from you as the east is from the west. Is that correct? And he's buried them in the sea of forgetfulness. Amen. Is that correct? Then the devil is trespassing. Some of you may say, hey, I've been playing footsie with the devil. I've been doing some things and saying some things that I know I ought not to do. If that's you, Tonight is the night. Today is the day of salvation. You need to repent and you need to ask God to forgive you for running your mouth or for the sin or trans whatever it is. I don't care. It doesn't matter to me. It only matters to you. And that can be a bluff and a trick of the enemy. I want you free. I want you flying with an eagle. 
We can't have you holding on to that stuff. We can't have self-doubt and self-condemnation and worry and anxiety and fears. If that's you, you just need to take responsibility for it and say, Lord, I'm sorry. The tide turns, the table turns on the devil when you repent. Lord, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for listening to the lies. Come on now, let's bathe this thing in repentance. That revival that broke out earlier this year, it was, there was a repentance service, amen? They just started repenting and they were just like, Lord, forgive us. Lord, heal us. Lord, we're sorry for, for seeking other things before your kingdom. We're sorry for, for uh, you, you know, being selfish. We're sorry for being fearful or intimidated or anxious or leaning on our own understanding, whatever it is. I'm sorry. Can you do that? Can you use your voice? I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Lord. I'm sorry. I feel, I feel lighter right now. I, I feel more connected to God right now. That's humbling yourself. I'm sorry, Lord, for being anxious or angry or frustrated. I'm sorry, Lord. I'm sorry for not being more loving. I'm sorry, Lord, for taking you for granted. Come on, what is it? What is it, Lord? I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Lord. I'm sorry. Lord, if there be anything, Holy Spirit, right now, like only you can, if there be anything in any of us, known or unknown, seen or unseen, or heard or unheard, Lord, please, please, by your mercy and your grace, bring it to the forefront of our minds. Lord, help us to lay it down. Help us, Lord. Help us to drop the stones, to, to stop pointing fingers, to stop the blame game, the fault this, Lord. We're sorry. I'm sorry, Lord. Let us look to, let us esteem others as more important than ourselves. Come on. Looking to Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and sat down at the right hand of God. So let us do the same thing so we may not grow weary. Let us lay it down. Let's, let's endure the season with a joy and a hopeful expectation of what's to come. Though the enemy stands tall, you can stand, will stand taller with Jesus Christ. It's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. Lord, stir up the faith of your people. Stir up their hearts. Stir up their minds. Remind them of the promises. Remind them of the plan and the calling for their life right now. And I, I want everyone to stand up right now. Stand up. You're, you're taking... They, they would take control and command of that situation. This is your area, Lord, and you say, Lord, your kingdom come, your will be done. On earth, right here where I'm standing, as it is in heaven, Lord. Right now, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name, fill me afresh with your Holy Spirit. Lord, right now, just bathe in that bathe in his presence right there just open yourselves up to him for he is good his mercy endures forever it is new every morning his love is everlasting right now receive it lord your kingdom come your will be done right here lord right in this in this one column where i stand in this one house where we stand united in a pursuit of you jesus your kingdom come your will be done right now lord deliver us in jesus name deliver us lord right now lord right now that's it. Jesus, we call on the name above every name. The name. Every tongue will confess. Every knee will bow. 
Jesus, come to this house tonight, Lord. Fill me with your presence, oh God. Oh, Lord. Jesus. Jesus, have mercy, Lord. Break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. Get out, devil, in the name of Jesus. Woo! Fill me, Lord. New life. Renewal. Restore my mind. Cleanse my heart. Purge my body of every defilement, of every unclean thing, every lie and half-truth. Get it out in Jesus' name. Come on, Lord. Your kingdom come. Your will be done right now, Lord. More, Jesus. Don't let go. Don't stand out. Stay connected. More, Jesus. Stir us up. Oh, Lord Jesus. Don't let go. Pour out yourself. Don't hold back, Jesus. We are yours. Right now, Lord. Blind eyes open. Deaf ears hear in Jesus' name. Broken minds work in Jesus' name. Blood sickness gone in Jesus' name. I speak healing in the mighty name of Jesus. Jesus! Jesus! Shout it out! Jesus! 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 Praise you, Lord! Praise you, Lord! Jesus! Jesus! Break every chain! Break every chain! Jesus! Woo, yes! Yes, don't let go! Don't let go! Keep pressing in! Press forward to the upper call of Christ Jesus! Pour out your spirit! Pour out your spirit! Speak, Lord! Move! Open the windows of heaven, Lord! Running over! Running over! Jesus! Jesus! Running over, running over, running over. Oh, Lord. Come on, keep pressing in. More of you, Jesus. Lord, we need more of you. Oh, break weariness. Break in Jesus' name. I speak strength and vitality and passion and power and the anointing that breaks every yoke in Jesus' name. Jesus, your kingdom come. Jesus. Come on, Lord. Keep moving. Don't stand down. Press in. Cry out for him. Cry out more, Jesus. More. Touch every fiber of my being. More. Jesus. Yes. Yes, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, touch my heart. Touch my body. I give it to you. Give him your life. I give it to you. My hopes, my dreams, my passions, my pain. I give it to you, my plans, my purpose. I give it to you, Jesus. 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 Come on, Jesus. Keep pressing in. Don't stop short. Jesus. Jesus, pour out your spirit. Pour it out, Lord. Pour it out. I'm an empty vessel. Fill me, Lord. I'm broken. Heal me, Lord. Heal me like you did with Elijah. Heal me, Lord. Heal my brokenness, Jesus. Fill my emptiness, Jesus. 
Oh, yes, yes, yes. He's good. Yes. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Jesus. Shout it out. Jesus. With a cry of command. Jesus. Yes, Lord. Break every chain. Heal every hurt. Set every captive free. That's why you came. That's why you're anointed. Your kingdom come. Your will be done. Jesus. Jesus. Oh. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Don't step down. Don't step down. Stay in there. Stay in there, Jesus. We thank you. We thank you, Jesus. We praise you. Yes, give them praise. Hallelujah. Thank you for what the Lord is doing. Thank you for what he's done. He is worthy. He alone is worthy. Jesus. Oh, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you for the answer to prayer. Tonight is the night. Tonight is the night. Jesus. Lord, have mercy, Lord. Yes, Lord. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Send your fire. Send your fire. Send your fire, Send your fire right now, Lord. We can't go another day, Lord, without your fire. We can't go another hour without your fire, Lord. Please, Lord. Oh, please. Cry out to him. Cry out, Jesus. I don't know what I need. I do. You need Jesus. Jesus. I don't know what it is. I know what it is. Jesus. Oh, Lord. Jesus! Jesus! Yeah! Praise you, Lord! Praise the Lord! Praise you! Praise you! Praise you! Praise you! We exalt you, Lord! We exalt you over our lives! We exalt you over our minds! We, we lift you up, Jesus! We praise you, Lord. We praise you. We praise you, Jesus. You are worthy. We are nothing without you, God. We can do nothing without you, God. You are everything for us. You are our everything. Jesus, you are our everything. You are my everything, Jesus. You are my everything. Tell them, tell them, you are my everything. You are my everything. I need nothing else. I just need Jesus. I need Jesus. I need nothing else, Jesus. Jesus. You are the beginning. You are the end. Everything that was made was made through you, and without you was nothing made that was made. All I need is Jesus. All we need is Jesus. Jesus. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Now you lay your hands on that area of your body. I doubt it hurts right now. I have great doubt that that hurts, that pain hurts, but you tell it to go. You tell it to go with the presence and the power and the praise of Jesus. You tell it to go. You tell that mind to be straightened up. You tell those lies to get out in Jesus' name. You tell that fear to bow down in Jesus' name. You tell it to get out in Jesus' name. You tell the racing thoughts, the insanity, the sexual perversion, get out in Jesus' name. Jesus, get out in Jesus' name. That religious spirit 
out in Jesus' name. Get out. Sickness, healing, laziness, foolishness. Get out, fool, in Jesus' name. Let me go in Jesus' name. Go. In Jesus' mighty, awesome, magnificent name. Get out. Let me go. Now. With a cry of command. Now. 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 Get out. Go. Generational curses. Get out. Witchcraft. Get out. I break you in Jesus' name. Witchcraft. Get out. Now. Rebellion. Go. In Jesus' name. Get out in Jesus' name. Let me go. Now. Out. Keep pressing in. Keep pressing in. Yet because of his persistence, be persistent. Today, tonight is the night in Jesus' mighty name. Be persistent. Lord, deliver me now. Lord, heal me now. Jesus, come touch my body, touch my mind, touch my heart, touch my soul now in Jesus' name. Be persistent. Let me in, Lord. Please, Lord, have mercy on me. Fear, intimidation, lies, get out in Jesus' name. Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. May his countenance shine ever before you.
you go before I know that you've even gone to win my war. You come back with the head of my enemy. You come back and you call it my victory. Oh. Spread it. 